today on Inspiration for the Day. Join Pastor Phil Keaton as he shares a noun word that will speak to your spirit. I'm going to teach you about the spirit. You start off as a babe in Christ. You're born again. You're a new creation in Christ's name. Jesus, all things pass away and behold, all things become new. That's who you are. That's your identity today. We were talking about identity. I'm a new creation in Jesus Christ. I'm born again. Old things pass away. Hallelujah. They're not relevant anymore. I'm not going back there. I'm going forward towards what God's got for me, Bobby. God's got me a promised land. And he said, keep looking for that city whose builder and maker is God. I'm on my way somewhere today. Is anybody else willing to to go today. I'm willing to go forward. Hallelujah. I'm about to pray to Hallelujah. Praise God for his presence here today. You know, as I was praying about this move of God that God is performing throughout the land, but this is from The Chosen, which if you get a chance to watch this clip about Nicodemus, it's online on YouTube. And it will help you to understand the context in which Jesus Christ was opening up the understanding to Nicodemus. How many of you know the Holy Spirit opens up our understanding? Oh, yes. Hallelujah. So, you know, God has a way of opening up things in our lives. And so all we got to do is just get our eyes fixed upon Jesus. And, you know, today as we think about how the Holy Spirit is working throughout the world, I want us to think about that God had to speak to the spirit of Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a man who was a scholar and who was understood to be a leader, and so he came to the Lord by night. And Jesus wanted to speak to him about the wind of the spirit. How many of y'all experienced the wind of the spirit here today? I felt his wind. And Jesus said to him, you should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear it sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How many of you know the wind is blowing again? The wind is blowing again. The wind of God's presence is flowing throughout this whole world. Hallelujah. Over in China, the wind is blowing. In Russia, the wind is blowing. Oh, hallelujah. How many of you know God can move through the midst even when there's wars going on? The Holy Spirit knows how to meet that person right where they're at. Aren't you glad that God came to where you were, that Jesus left the 99 to go after you? You were the one. And that day, Nicodemus was the one that Jesus was going after. But old Nicodemus, he knew that he needed to come see Jesus by night. He had seen these miracles. He had seen Jesus open the eyes of the blind. He had seen the lame walk. And he was astounded by Jesus. But yet Jesus wasn't going up through the normal structure that they had. He was a rabbi. He called it Rabboni, Jesus. Amen. But he didn't have a local synagogue. But he had spoken in the synagogue and said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, hallelujah, to set at liberty them that are captive, hallelujah. How many of you know he knows how to give freedom to those who are captive today? Oh, it's the same Jesus that walked the shores of Galilee. He's here this morning. He's walking this carpet this very day. How many of you know that blind man was blind, but then Jesus passed by? Oh, hallelujah. And I can just imagine when somebody said, oh, I got to go after Jesus healed his blind Bartimaeus. And he said, oh, I'll see you later. Amen. I'll see you later. Because God has given me sight. So Nicodemus saw this. And so Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. He had a reputation. Jesus was an itinerant preacher who was sharing the good news, the gospel, that Jesus was God's son who had come to express the love of God. And he called him his father. He said, you're Abba, Father. And so the people heard the sound of Jesus and they were amazed. And so now Nicodemus is like, I've got to find out more. Aren't you glad that you've got some spiritual curiosity this morning? 
How many of you still want to find out some more? Hallelujah. I'm still curious. I still want to know more about you, Jesus. I still want to bring my questions to you, Jesus. Hallelujah. John the Baptist, when he was at his lowest point, and he even wondered if Jesus was the Messiah, he sent a message to Jesus, and he said, Are you the Christ, or am I to look for another? And Jesus sent a message black. The blind can see. The deaf can hear. The poor have the gospel preached to them. He said, John, be encouraged this day. Hallelujah. You may be in a physical dungeon, but your spirit is beginning to burn with the power of the spirit, just like you felt in your mother's womb. And here's Nicodemus. Now, he is a man who of great stature in Israel, but God has given him that desire to know more. He comes to Jesus. What must I do to see the kingdom of heaven? What must I do? And Jesus said that a man must be born of water and of the spirit to see into the kingdom of heaven. He said that which is flesh is flesh and that which is spirit is spirit. How many of you know you had to be born one day when your mama's water broke? Amen. That meant it was time to go to the hospital, Bobby. Yeah. You know what? See, Debbie and I, we were out after a church service, and we went to the pizza hut. We had some of the youth hanging out with us, and so we were having that big pizza was just about to come out of the oven. And yeah, I was, I was smelling it, and I was getting ready. And she reached over and said, my water broke. And I said, oh, well, have you, have you got it to go? Hey, man. I had the pizza to go. I said, come on, honey, we're going. She said, I need to go home and change. I said, you need to go home and change. I said, no, we're heading to the hospital. But she can be persuasive. She's, she's got certain ways of being very persuasive. But I, got, I had a decision to make. Was I heading to the right or to the left on the interstate? And that one time, I said, honey, we head to the hospital. I don't care what you need to change into. We are heading to the hospital. So I got to going down the road. And she said, hurry, hurry. I said, oh, help me, Jesus. So I hit that pedal a little harder. I got up to about 90 then. I was in a hurry, amen. And then she said, faster, faster. Jonathan, I never heard her tell me to go faster. That's the first and only time. So I knew, Bill, you know, she's always telling me, slow down. She takes those reins and tries to pull this horse back and say, oh, that horsepower, you know. But she said, faster. I said, honey, I'm doing 90-something. Faster. I said, oh, that baby's getting ready. She's on her own timetable. And she wasn't going to let mama go home and change clothes. No, Elisa decided when and where she was going to be born. Amen. So I got off that interstate, and I was heading straight for that hospital. And there was that, within about 40 minutes, 30 minutes, it was quick. And, you know, she was having those uh, labor pains. <laughs> and I was, I was praying that I could keep enough distance between me and her. But, you know... I remember when that baby was born, Elisa was born. And what a joyful occasion it was. The baby had been in the womb, but now the seed was coming forth. And Jesus said in the same way, the seed of the word is planted into your spirit. Woo. Somebody get a hold of this now. The faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. The seed went, of the word went into that spirit, one, your spirit one day. Hallelujah. You heard the word and you received the word, didn't you? Hallelujah. The word came and you may have pushed it away many times before. You may have said, I'm not ready. You may have made a million excuses. You might have had any reason in the world. But one day, one day, that seed went into your heart. How many of you remember that day? 
Oh, it's a, <laughs> there was a birth. There was a new beginning. Hallelujah. There was a spiritual beginning that took place. And just like in the physical realm, that baby was in darkness inside the mother's womb. The baby couldn't have full apprehension of this display of this glorious world we live in. The baby had no idea what was about to happen. Something great was about to happen. Now, that baby might have felt really warm and cozy. But when that baby said, Elisa said, it's time for me to be born. And I'm coming. And when she came, her eyes were opened. Oh, what a joy it was for me. And you know, I can only imagine when, when her mom took her in her arms and started holding her. And then, you know, I had a camera and I got, I got nervous. But you know what? <laughs> You know, that little baby looked up and saw that mother's face and thought, wow, that's a beautiful face. That's a wonderful face. And how many of you know when you were born again, you saw the face of Jesus? Hallelujah. When you're born again, you get a, a revelation of who he is. In that moment, in one moment, your spirit is ignited and alive and you're born of the spirit so you're born of the water and then you're born of the spirit that's your second birth how many of you know that god gave you a second birth hallelujah and you were born again and jesus is explaining it to nicodemus when well, nicodemus is saying well how can a man go back into his mother's womb jesus says you're you're not looking at this spiritually i'm trying to teach you something nicodemus I'm going to teach you about the Spirit. You start off as a babe in Christ. You're born again. You're a new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things pass away and behold, all things become new. That's who you are. That's your identity today. We were talking about identity. I'm a new creation in Jesus Christ. I'm born again. Old things pass away. Hallelujah. They're not relevant anymore. I'm not going back there. I'm going forward towards what God's got for me, Bobby. God's got me a promised land. And he said, keep looking looking for that city whose builder and maker is God. I'm on my way somewhere today. Is anybody else willing to go today? I'm willing to go. Whoa. Hallelujah. I'm about getting ready to. Hallelujah. I'm on my way with Jesus. Hallelujah. And you know that little baby is born and can see the beauty of creation all around and now you begin to get new revelation and God begins to open up your eyes of understanding to spiritual truths. You can see into the kingdom of heaven. You can see into the kingdom of God. Before you sang Amazing Grace, it might not have meant anything to you. You might have heard it a million times, but there was one time when you said Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. T'was blind, but now I see. Oh, aren't you thankful for that amazing grace today? Oh, hallelujah. And you know that loving mother. That mother nurtures that child, and dad's over there cheerleading. Go, baby, go. That baby, that baby wakes up in the middle of the night, and then I tell my wife, go, baby, go. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank God for mothers. Amen. Amen. It ain't even Mother's Day, but I'm throwing that in. Amen. <laughs> but you think about God raises us up and gave us life. And he gave us new life in Christ. You're a new creation. You've got a new life. You've got a new vision. You've got a fresh vision of what God can do in your life today. I said God has given you a fresh vision. He's taken you somewhere. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God has taken us on a journey. And, and, you know, I love to hear about how God works in people's lives. You know, I think about I used to live over near where Jonathan was raised. And, and I was over there for nine and a half years. But the Bible says, Jesus told Nicodemus, the wind bloweth where it listeth. 
But then God put a vision in me to be here. And so that's why I'm here today. I never heard of this place. I don't think I knew any of y'all. Boy, I was in for a big surprise. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Boy, God, God had some blessings ahead for me. Oh, Jonathan, I had blessings around Titusville. I loved it. Had a great time there. I just wish I would have known you. Amen. You might have been at his journey. He took him to North Alabama, wasn't it? It was up, and he was in North Carolina for a while at school. But God has brought us together in this moment. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't it great? Oh, do you know, I think God has gotten a lot of chuckles out of you. Did you hear that? I think he, you've given him a lot of laughter and joy. And I think about my children, how much joy they brought me. Now, they've gotten on my nerves sometimes. And, and, and I don't know if God has nerves, but <laughs> he's had to be patient with us, had he? And I think about little Elisa when I first saw her take those first steps. And, you know, they're wobbling around, and then they crash. Mama's like, oh, honey. But you know, some people spiritually, they get born again, but then they go to some churches, try to tell them that if they fall or slip and stumble a little bit as they're starting to know the Lord, and, and, and that they view God this way, saying, get up from there, you stupid idiot. What are you doing down there? Didn't I teach you how to take a step? Did you treat your children that way? If you therefore being earthly know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more does your heavenly father know how to give good gifts to them that ask? If you know how to be good to your children, how much more does your heavenly father? Oh, praise your name, Lord. Thank you for being patient with me. Are you thankful that he's been patient with you? Are you thankful that when you fell down, he picked you up and said, hey, Take another step. Take another step. I've got things for you to do for my kingdom. And then the devil said, yeah, but you tripped and fell. You messed up. God can't use you. And then you tell him, you're a liar. Get thee behind me, Satan. God specializes in the recycling business. Amen. He knows how to take somebody and recycle them into what he wants you to be. Oh, hallelujah, Bobby. He got a hold of you, didn't he? Hallelujah. He shook you up a little bit, didn't he? Hallelujah. He sure did. He got a hold of you. And he said, hey, I got a good old boy over there. I want you to help him in your worship to give glory and honor and praise to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. He says, I'm teaming you up with somebody else. JJ, he's teaming you up. Kathy, he's teaming you up. Oh, he's teamed us all up, hasn't he? Oh, how many of you know you're on the winning team? Oh, hallelujah. I don't care what the devil says the score is. You tell him we already know what the end is going to be, and we know what your future is, and we know what our future is, and I've got news for you today. I've been born again, not of, the, of just the flesh, but also of the spirit. No Nicodemus, I imagine his eyes started popping because, you see, the Holy Spirit, now Jesus spoke the word, now the Holy Spirit then is beginning to then take that seed and he's beginning to water it. Paul said, I, I planted Apollos water, but God gives the increase. See, the Holy Spirit began to birth something inside of you and he's taking you somewhere today. And you've taken some steps towards whatever goal he's put before you. Oh, hallelujah. And each day's a new adventure with God. When I wake up in the morning, I say, God, I don't know exactly what this day holds. I might have a plan. But how many of you know God can get in the midst of the plan? And he can, t he can do something. Oh, hallelujah. He can take you to somebody you never met before. I saw a woman I never met before. Oh, praise God. I saw a woman I had never met before this past week when I was going to see your wife, Terry. I was there with Sandy. I was, she's in rehab. Thank you for your prayers and those who got to go by. So I, I was praying with her. And then I looked over at the lady in the bed next door and there were big old tears coming down her cheeks.
And the Lord said, hey, now I want you to minister to her and she's going to minister to you. And she said, you know, I broke my hip. She said, I was in here, I couldn't move. I was so, she said, I was down. And then she said, I got a roommate named Sandy. Amen. And she helped lift my spirit. While she was getting rehab herself from a back surgery, she was lifting up her spirit. And then I'm sure Sandy's spirit got lifted up with this other lady's spirit because how many of you know God gives us people with a kindred spirit? Spirit to spirit. And he's, Jesus is talking to Nicodemus. He's speaking life into him. Now, Nicodemus has all the rituals. He has all the law. He's got it memorized. He knows it. He's, a, he's an expert in all of these things. And Jesus is saying, now let me take you somewhere. The wind blows wherever it wants to go. How many of you know when the wind blows, we're going to go with it where the wind blows? See, when we're worshiping the Lord where the breeze is blowing, that's where we're going. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord because God is in the midst. There's a move of God and I'm moving with you, God. And I know just like you wanted to take Nicodemus somewhere, you want to take every one of us somewhere. This day, the wind blows. He blows. Put up your sails. Go sailing with God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Think of that sailboat and then get out there and just sail with God and let the breeze blow you where he wants you to go. See, he, 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 that breeze took me into that rehab center. And then when I walked in, the breeze walked in with me. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. The breeze began to blow. Hallelujah. Somebody says, yeah, but you weren't at the church. Oh, yeah, I was where two are gathered in my name. I'm in the midst. I was in church right there. Everywhere I go, I, I, I'm in church. I remember, I remember going in. A guy named Wayne used to come here, and, and he said, I want you to go see my brother-in-law, Junior. And there was Junior. He was in a wheelchair. And he said, I prayed with him, Helen. And he said, something's happening. And he's still talking about that day. He met Jesus. He had heard about Jesus. But he met Jesus. His eyes were opened and he could see. Hallelujah. Aren't you thankful that the breeze is still blowing? Wherever you're going, the breeze is blowing into people's lives, the, breeze, the fresh breeze. How many of you know, even yesterday, I was out on my bike and I felt that fresh breeze blow. Did anybody feel a good breeze yesterday? I did. Boy, I sure enjoyed it. Thank you, Lord, for the breeze of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. I remember the first day after the hurricane, our first t service outside, I said, Lord, I thank you for the breeze of the Spirit. And a breeze just blew by right at that moment while we were right out there. And you know, some of the guys that were working on this building, they were standing out there getting in the service as we were getting ready to come back. Thank you, Lord. And along the way, God's given us some great soldiers. Like Paul said, I fought the good fight. I finished the course. I've kept the faith. There's a crown of righteousness for me, but not just for me only, but for all those who love your appearing. You know, I went to see one of those soldiers. He was over on the other coast. First, he was at New Smyrna Beach, and Bill and I went over and saw him. His name's David Allen. We may even have a picture, I hope, for you. But, you know, God blessed us with David Allen. He sat right over here, faithful, every step of the way. He was here to worship his Lord. And I heard about how he told me about his granddaughter dragging him to church one day. And the Lord got a hold of his heart because of that granddaughter. And I got to see him. <laughs> there he is. Oh, thank you, Lord. Let's, Lord, we just thank you for David. Thank you for giving this gift to us. Thank you, Lord. 
that I know he was wanting to go home when I was with him in that picture. He was so ready to see Koba. He was so ready. And within a couple of days after I left, he went home to meet the one who gave him a new birth. And because of that, he was able to see the kingdom of heaven because he was born again. Hallelujah. You must be born again, Jesus said. Oh, hallelujah. There may be some people born again that don't even know what to call it. They've had an encounter with Jesus. One guy, I went to a church to get some PA equipment. The wife said, hey, would you carry him with me? Would you carry him with you when you go to get that equipment? He, he has some expertise in that area, so I went with him. I said, come on, go, let go with me. So we went out, and he asked me all these big theological questions. And he said, you know, was an atheist, of course, but maybe he was getting close to agnostic. But he had all these questions, so I, I engaged with him. But then we went and we got the equipment, and then we all joined hands. I said, let's give thanks for this meeting today. I said, this is great, just like when I met you. I said, this is great fellowship. And I, we joined hands, and he, here's the atheist next to me over here. And I said, Father, I thank you for this meeting today. And I said, I thank you for bringing us together. And I thank you for this moment. And as I'm praying, and then I said, in the name of Jesus Christ. And he went, whoo! I'm not ready for this. God's got to have a sense of humor, right? I told you, you make him chuckle. Hallelujah. But you know, that's why you're here today, because you got a fresh revelation of Jesus. And if you didn't, and you're just visiting today, and you haven't yet got that fresh revelation, today is your day. Today is your day. Wherever you're at, he'll meet you. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, he can meet you in the bathroom. Amen. You might need him to meet you in the bathroom. Amen. Yeah, amen. He can meet you. Oh, hallelujah, wherever you're at. Amen. I'm telling you, Jesus knows how. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He that openeth the door, I will come in and I will sup with him and he with me. How many of you know that God has given you downloads every day of revelation of Jesus? And you know something, a download the Lord gave me the other day as I was praying about this. It's like, this, I saw it in the spirit that like this, the breeze blowing and how it makes those waves on the water. Out of the innermost of your being shall flow rivers of living water. Oh, that's the Spirit of God rising, moving, stirring. Oh, hallelujah. Hi, I'm Pastor Phil, and we're excited about what God is doing at our church at the Souls Harbor Church. You know, when you think about it, a church is a gathering place that we gather together and we see God demonstrate His Spirit through people using their gifts that He has given them so that it might edify the body of Christ and build us up. So if you're out there today and you're looking for a church home, Come visit us at 451 West Helen Avenue in Punta Gorda, Florida, and have a great day.